Peter Barnes, welcome. Thanks, Colin. Nice to be here. Given our increasing exposure to the information about brain plasticity, you must have had a thought or two about your own methods for developing creativity and innovation, particularly in business. Um, sure. I mean, over the years, I've worked in um, large corporations, I've worked in small businesses, I've started small businesses. Um, essentially, I guess I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, in the, the early, my early working career, I was a, an intrapreneur, working as an entrepreneur within organisations. And then in the last decade or so, I've um, returned to or moved to being an entrepreneur on my own behalf. Uh, so that, that um, background has given me some insights into how I um, think creatively. Uh, I'm not necessarily suggesting that what I do is um, transferable into generally applicable principles for everybody else because everybody's brain's different. Um, but I can certainly tell you the things that have worked for me. So I'm curious, you've only moved into uh, this field though in terms of your involvement in business in the last 10 to 15 years, would that be right? That's correct. Around about 10 to 15 years, but obviously you've been in business for much longer than that. Have you found that uh, your recent involvement with brain science has made you, in fact, more innovative and creative just by being in that business? Yes, it has. Because what's happened is being in this business has exposed me to this um, scientific knowledge and, uh, and has um, meant that I've had to learn a whole new um, body of knowledge. And one of the key things, the key simple things that comes out of all this research, which is applicable to everybody, is that to maintain and improve our, our brain's capacity, we need to do novel things. We need to do new things. So for example, if you're good at Sudoku and you just do Sudoku every day, you'll get better and better at Sudoku. But that's not necessarily going to um, translate across to other um, cognitive, mental thinking functions. So you need to do different things. You need to do something uh, that will challenge you in some different way. You maybe need to learn a language or um, take up a different sport or do ballroom dancing or whatever it is. So it's not just about new things but also diversity. Diversity, yes, yes, yes. Because what happens is if you're um, hitting a tennis ball repeatedly, 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 what that does is it builds a connection in the brain and they, you can see this through um, neuroimaging using functional mm. magnetic resonance imaging yep. that will build up a particularly strong connection here in the brain between certain parts of the brain, between a number of parts of the brain. But um, there's the whole rest of your brain. So uh, you have to, to build the rest of it, uh, you need to be doing all sorts of different things, thinking about different things, engaging in different things, interacting with different people. If you just hang out with the same people that have your point of view about the world and um, feel very comfortable doing that, uh, you're not going. You, you'll certainly. <laughs> you're not going to end up um, with a very flexible brain. It sounds like you would just get very good at doing exactly what you were doing a lot of. That's right. So, so if you if you're narrowing your focus, you'll just get very very good at narrowing your focus. That's exactly right. And there's not necessarily a, a bad thing if if you. Um, need to have a very great skill in some narrowly focused area, well of course that's what you should do. But if you want to be an entrepreneur and think creatively about business issues, about how to do things differently, about different markets and different products, and you need to, you need to think broadly, you need to expose yourself to all sorts of different things. This is not just a young person's thing. In fact, I think as you get older, um, you're able to use the um, experience that you've gained as a foundation on which to overlay all sorts of new possibilities and see connections that you may not have been able to see when you were younger. So age may, age may be an advantage in some innovative fields. Excellent, I look forward to getting older. <laughs> that sounds great. Most people probably don't look forward to that. So we've talked about the general principles that you've come across. Are you able to share some that you personally use? I mean, what, what methods do you personally use to be innovative and creative, and, and how do you use those in your business? Um, a whole bunch of things that have developed. I don't specifically sit down and say, now I'm going to be innovative. It doesn't work like that. Um, I like to give myself free time. I like to be able to have quiet time from time to time. And quiet time is not me going and sitting in the corner and saying, I'm having quiet time to innovate now. Quiet time can be sitting on a plane going somewhere where there's nothing else happening and I can just 
let things come into my head or think about a particular issue and some thoughts may come up. Um, other things that I think help are the um, conscious approach of saying to yourself, um, no matter how absurd the idea might be, let's have a look at it. It's the um, yes and response to someone saying um, something. So if someone, and working, this brings, brings me to the working in groups, I'll come back to the yes and in a second, but working in groups particularly is a f massively fertile field for innovation and ideas. Um, I've always found uh, what works for me is a whiteboard in a room full of people and let's start talking about a particular issue or a particular problem or opportunity. And, and anything is possible in the, the context is anything is possible and uh, never to say no but to a suggestion. Um, if someone makes an, what seems to be on the face of an absurd suggestion, an absurd idea, uh, don't say no but that won't work. Say yes and how might that work or how might that affect something else and that process it can be massively creative. So turning to the future now, uh, I don't suppose retirement is on your agenda anytime soon? I think retirement is the most absurd thing. I can't imagine retiring. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it would be, there's so much, the world is so interesting and there's so much to do. Why okay. would someone retire? Okay, well let me push that a little <laughs> bit further. Uh, let's say retirement's not on your agenda as you've just stated, does that mean that you'll just keep doing what you're doing or are you going to actually seek out even more business opportunities as you get as you get older? Oh absolutely, I mean if this particular business that I'm working in now, um, you know I may sell this business down the track somewhere, um, I may get partners in, we may, who knows what we might do with it, but all the time I'm looking, I have two or three or four different business ideas going at once, there's a number of businesses uh, in various forms of evolution. I'm not just working on this one business right now. I don't want to uh, ask you to give away any names here, but are you actually actively seeking out a new business opportunity right now? I mean, it's, what are we, in May 2011? Are you seeking out anything particular now? Yes, I'm looking at the whole area of um, what's happening digitally and the connect connectivity between everybody in the world and looking at how that, how we can marry education and that technology and what we could potentially deliver uh, to potentially every English-speaking child, every English-speaking student, but actually every English-speaking adult in the world, uh, all have needs to learn things uh, and the old structured go into a classroom, go into a lecture, uh, sit down, read the textbook, maybe get a bit of stuff off the internet and learn seems to me there's a better way. So I think some, yeah, I'm looking for opportunities there. Peter Barnes sounds like a very exciting future. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure, Colin. Thank you.